So, you've decided you want to make music, but you don't quite know how to record vocals. And even if you did know how to record vocals, you don't know how to process them, let alone mix them. If you're trying to work that out, you've come to the right place. Hi everyone, and welcome to Auditum. My name is Chris, and I've been working in music studios for over a decade. We're a music production platform that specializes in helping artists just like you with music leasing, mixing and mastering, and custom production. So you can do what you've always wanted to do and release your own tracks. Over the next few videos, we're gonna break down exactly what we have to do in a step-by-step -step process so you can record professional vocals from your own home studio. But first of all, we need to cover how we even set up a home studio. It's not quite as easy as just plugging in a microphone and ultimately you sound like Adele or Calvin Harris. I know it can be quite overwhelming for a lot of artists and I can understand how it is for you. Okay, so step number one is your room acoustics. When recording a studio vocal, you need to make sure you have the driest sound possible. Oh, look, natural reverb is the best. And it's not because specifically you cannot control a natural reverb. So we need a dry and completely flat response vocal. So the best way to achieve a drier sound is to kill the room reflections. And the way we kill room reflections is with acoustic panels. You may have seen these online on Amazon or any music shop and they look like foam acoustic panels and you want to put them around the vocal that you're recording. If you don't have any room acoustics and you just record in an empty room with no treatment, you're going to have room reflections left, right and centre. Not an ideal start. If you can, try to set up plenty of room acoustics to kill the reflections in the room. And the best way to know if you've killed the room reflections is if you walk into the room or the vocal booth and you talk into the microphone or you even talk to yourself. You won't hear any room tone, you won't hear any reflections and you won't hear any reverb. All you'll hear is your core vocal as flat and as dead as it comes. Now, step number two, what microphone should you use? Don't use your iPhone and specifically don't use your AirPods or your MacBook microphone because it's sh what you need is a condenser microphone because these have the highest sensitivity to sound coming to the front diaphragm. If you don't use the right microphone, you won't be able to pick up the details of the voice. And a condenser microphone is a lot more sensitive, so it will pick up a really clean signal. And before you stand in front of a microphone, this brings us up to step number three. You're going to need some sort of pop filter. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of what's known as plosives. If you talk into a microphone, it will pick up the P's, S's and the M's and all the the little vocal discrepancies which make your voice sound the way it does. But when you're trying to control a vocal for a studio vocal recording, you don't want all of these harsh P's popping out. We have to think about this for later down the line because when we come to process a vocal, the last thing we want to be doing is trying to compress really hard to tame all these plosives. Now that's going to make your vocal sound a little bit too over compressed and a little bit too harsh and it's not going to sound very natural. Ideally, you want the most natural vocal you possibly can. Now this brings us to step number four. How far away should you stand to the microphone? It depends on your voice. The closer you stand to the microphone or the pop filter, which you should have on, the more bass the microphone is going to pick up. But if you stand too close to the microphone, it will also pick up more plosives and more mouth noise. Now, if you flip it to the opposite side and you stand too far back, the room is more likely to pick up your reflection first before it hits the microphone because it has further to travel from your voice to the front diaphragm of the microphone. So we need to make make sure we're not standing too far back. Well, you can stand really far back, shout your back in vocals because it's going to work. Ultimately, it's debatable. Personally, I wouldn't do it, mainly because you still want to pick up a dry, clean signal. And if you're standing all the way back at the end of the room to pick up your ad libs and your back in vocals, it's not really going to work for you because you still have to mix it in. You can step a little bit further back to create slight more space, but don't go too far. You can always bring down the volume enabled to control the levels of the vocal that you've recorded. And if you want to put some effects or you want to extend the reverb a little bit on your backing vocals, that can create a really nice depth of space. What you don't want to do is try to stand too far back and try to shout into the microphone 
because it's simply not going to sound very good. Ideally, the rule of thumb is a hand width apart. So if I put my hand to my mouth and it should stand to the microphone, I want to be of this kind of distance. Now, this brings us to step number five. What headphones do we need? Because ultimately, we need to be hearing the track that we're recording to. Now, there's two types of headphones on the market which are known as studio headphones. There's open back and there's closed back. This is a whole nother video I will explain later on down the line. However, just to cover it shortly right now, closed back is exactly as it says. It has a back at the end of the headphones which stops the sound from traveling out. Now, if you have a look at these headphones right here, you can see they have a back on them. And the reason why they have a back on them is to trap the sound within the headphones. If we want to record vocals, we don't want to have any exterior sound. All we want to pick up is the voice. So if we have what's known as sound bleed from the headphones picked up from the microphone, it's going to come back in your vocal take. And even though it only sounds very quiet in the vocal take, you think, oh, it's okay, I can get away with it. You're going to come to process that vocal. And when you come to process the vocal, you will upward compress. Now, if you compress, it's going to bring the quiet parts to meet the louder parts in simple terms. Now, by doing so, you're going to pick up the bleed from the headphones, which is exactly what you don't want because it's going to make mixing the vocal very, very tricky. Always go for closed back headphones. My favorite pick are either the Audio Technica ATH M50s or the Audio Technica ATH M70X. Those are really, really good headphones. They're very clean, they're very quiet, and they sound really, really nice for when you're recording vocals. Plus, they fit really nice on your head. Now we have the room perfectly set up and we're ready to record a vocal, but we've not actually recorded anything yet. We haven't started recording. So that's in this video where we're going to talk about everything we need to do next in order to start recording our vocal. Also, if you found this video helpful at all, make sure to drop the like button, hit a subscribe, and also hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as new content drops, because this channel is all about helping you as an artist grow and discover your sound, as well as some wicked tips on how to record vocals maybe mix it. I'll see you in the next video.